Hello, Meg Miller, Adult Services Librarian at the Pflugerville Public Library. And during this time of library closure and program postponements and cancellations, we've been bringing you additional content to hopefully help you pass the time while you've been at home. Uh, so I've actually got some crafts that folks will be able to do, hopefully with stuff they can find right around the house. Uh, Crafty Cafe is a program that we do on the third Sunday of every month at 2 p.m. Um, anyone 12 and up is welcome to attend. We have a craft and there is a Keurig uh, for beverages to make it a cafe. So for these purposes, you'll have to provide your own beverage, but we're hoping to provide everyone with some crafty at home cafe. Uh, so we've got some crafts for you to try and hopefully have the things around the house. This craft is a real quick and easy one. Um, if some of the cleanup that you've been doing is getting rid of old or damaged books, you can use some of those pages uh, to create this really cool um, kind of carnation looking recycled book page flower. Um, we've done this at BookFest where we added magnets on the back or you could add a uh, pin back on it and use it as kind of a brooch. Um, I have one that lives in my car that's gotten a really cool coloring from um, the sun. So all you really need for this is, as I said, the book pages, a pen, um, and a cup to mark out your circle size, or if you've got a circle punch or something else that you wanna use um, just to create some circles. And actually, um, even if they're not completely perfectly circular, it'll probably create some interesting edges for your flower. And then for this, you just need a stapler um, to connect them together. So to start with, I'm just gonna take my cup and I'm going to trace the outline of the circle onto the book page. Uh, because this one's a little bit longer, I can actually do two different circles. So I can do a couple of flowers here. All right, and then um, you will also need some scissors to cut out your circles. Uh, these are about eight pages. I feel like it's something I can do pretty easy with these scissors. Eight. Actually, there's only ten in this stack, so I'm going to go ahead and try and just cut through them all together. So I'm going to cut down the middle here and then around our circle. As I said, if you've got a circle punch, this goes a whole lot faster, which is what we had uh, when we prepped for using this as a craft, as a real quick craft. Again, as I said, if your circle's not exactly perfect, that's not the worst. All right, my next set of circles here. I'll go ahead, I think I wanna make this flower pretty full. On uh, the last one, I did 16 sheets on that example one. This one will have 20. So we've got our sets of circles um, cut out here. I'm just going to stack them together and see that my stapler can handle 20. There we go. Stapled beautifully. All right. So really this is just 20 sheets of book page in a circle stapled in the middle. Um, and then I'm going to take a sheet at a time. Um, here you'll consider whether it's the smooth side of the staple or the bumpy side of the staple. Um, really, probably better off to put the um, bottom of the staple in the center of your flower. Um, and then I'm just going to take this inside page and I'm going to crinkle it up and then continue along. Really no kind of freeform crinkle here, keeping it all in the center and continuing. And you get a little bit of better crinkle and a better flower shape if you kind of use one page at a time rather than several pages. Although once we get this all crinkled together, we are going to loosen it a bit. You'll see here I've got it. It's a very kind of middle. It's each side, each page is not crinkled in exactly the same way. I tend to try and twist the circle as I go, kind of folding and crinkling, almost looks like a little rosebud at this stage. So we're gonna continue on with that for each of the layers.
All right, and we're just about to the final layers and our rosebud in the center is really starting to get pretty wide. I like that this one's got so much. And each of the different pages is going to, um, what the words are, whether like this one's just a clear page um, with no text on it, it's probably the start of a chapter. It will add a little bit of dimension to the look of your flower. Starting from a different section each time. Now that we're getting close to the bottom, I'm really starting to have, you might see my bottom is kind of flexing down, but that's just the last two sheets. All right, last one. Okay, and now we have our little rosebud here all squished up. And then I'm just gonna slowly pull from the edges. Fluff out my flower where all of those crinkles give you, like I said, that kind of carnation look to it. And now I have a very cool little carnation flower out of a book page. One little fun bonus feature for these um, recycled book page flowers is if you happen to have some paints like these watercolors laying around, um, you can actually add a little bit of color uh, to the edges of your flower. Maybe you have a different colored um, little rosette or a little carnation here. Um, so I'll use red on the last one. I'm gonna add some blue to this guy. And I really am just using a small brush and a little bit of, on the edges just to kind of create some dimension and color. Come down to purple, one of my favorite colors. And I really am just kind of going along the edge here to add a bit of dimension and splash. Um, if I had some, I might even consider glitter. I know, I know. I shouldn't, but I might. Even if you've got some um, old wrapping paper with fun colors around, something like that, it's, um, or paper that's the same with colors on both sides might be uh, nice to use to make these. Construction paper would be great. It's gonna have a really good crinkle to it as well. All right, I really like that little guy.